So this is navigation two, exercise 10.3 using running fixes. So in this question, question one, use the Auckland chart below to find the running fixes for the following. So here is the Auckland chart. And we have the center of the Three Kings Islands was at 17 degrees. After we sailed for 40 nautical miles at 60, uh, at a bearing of 60 degrees, it's now at 337 degrees. So in other words, we're far enough away from islands and land that we can only see one thing on the horizon or one thing that we can use as a fix, and that is the centre of the Three Kings Islands. So first off, let's see if we can find the Three Kings Islands on the map. Manuku Harbour, Cape Brett, Three Kings Islands. So here's the Three Kings Islands, and you can see that there is three dots, one after the other, in a line quite likely why it's called Three Kings Islands. So therefore, the centre of the Three Kings Islands, so in other words, the middle one, was at 17 degrees. So here we are with the compass rose. Let's find 17 degrees. That's 10. 17 is about there. Using a rolling ruler from the centre of the compass rose to 17 degrees. So we're at we are assumed to be in the middle of the, the compass rose and we sighted the centre of the Three Kings Islands at that. So holding that steady, moving it across to the middle of the Three Kings Islands, it means that we are on this line somewhere. So we were looking this, this direction, 17 degrees, and we saw the centre of the Three Kings Islands. Okay, the next one then. After we sail for 40 nautical miles at 60 degrees, it's now at 337 degrees. Okay, so let's look at 337 degrees next. Here's 350, 340, 330, 320. What are we after again? 337, back here. That's about 337. Using a rolling wheel through the middle of the compass rows. Through 337, roll it to the centre of the Three King Islands. My pencil might be quite thick. Okay, so now we have two lines. This line, which was our first sighting. This line is our second sighting. Okay, And we were going at a bearing of 60 degrees. So let's just have a look at what that looks like. So through the middle there to 60 degrees is that. Okay. So we may have been somewhere like there going that direction, there going that direction, or there going that direction, okay? The only thing that will stop us being here or here will have been the distance down here. This distance would be great. Up here, this distance would be small. So how far did we go? We went up here, 40 nautical miles. So we need a way of converting nautical miles into a distance on the paper. So remember that lines of longitude can be used, because it's a great circle, it can be used that one degree of line of longitude is exactly the same thing as a nautical mile. So therefore we need to find 40 um, minutes, sorry, one minute of a line of longitude is the same as one nautical mile. So we need to find 40 minutes. 35 to 36 would be 60 minutes, and it's divided up into one major section there. So that would be 30 minutes. So let's look at between 30 minutes and 36 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's six sections on 30, which means each of these are five minutes each. So what we need is from there to there would be 30 minutes, plus another two would take us to 40 minutes. So that's 40 minutes. So somewhere on this line, we want 40 minutes at a bearing of 60 degrees. Now, two different ways of doing this. One is to actually get 60 degrees, like that. Roll it back and continuously try to see whether the gap between the two areas matches um, our 40 knot nautical miles. So there, the gap is still too large. There, the gap is still too large. There the gap is a bit too small, so we're going to roll back. So that's about it. So that was our original point there, and that was our final point there. And we can draw a line between those two. 
So this was our original point and this was our final point. Okay, the second way of working it out is instead of actually um, instead of actually keep on moving this around until we find that gap to be exactly 40 nautical miles, what we can do is use uh, lines of parallel to form a parallelogram. So I'm going to show what's going to happen here. So imagine if we have two parallel lines that we know are parallel, if we assume that they're parallel, which means even though I've hand-drawn them, we assume that they're never going to meet. If we cross them with two other parallel lines, okay, two other parallel lines, this parallelogram in here has certain properties. Because these two lines are always going to be the same distance apart, and because these two lines are also going to be always the same distance apart, we can say that this line here, between here and here, has to be the same length as the line between there and there. And conversely, this length here, even though it might be distant, different to these ones, it has to be the same length as that one. Okay, so a parallelogram, that will always be true. It's th that the opposite sides are the same length. Now we can use that to our advantage to shorten what we can do here. So what we want to do is draw a parallelogram so starting from our original location, and we know that this is going to be 40 nautical miles, and that's going to be a distance, if we said that we drew a line parallel to this one that we're expecting to give from the middle of Three Kings, so if we said this line here is once again parallel to any other line coming this way at, 60, at a bearing of 60 degrees, so therefore, if we, if we measure this distance from here to here, and we said that that's that distance there, this distance, if we move that rolling ruler anywhere back, okay, if we move this anywhere back this way, sorry, if we move from here, anyway back this way, when we get to our 40 nautical miles, if we draw a line parallel to this one, so this one is now a line and it has a parallel line associated with it, and this one was a line that was parallel to that one. What we have is finally a position here that we can then draw a parallel line back this way back here to this one. And so what we have then is a parallelogram where we find this position first, where we are by using this one, and then this back distance here. So where they both cross, this point and this point, I've gone that distance. And this can come back over to here. So, and you can see that from both methods, they come up to the same point.